we're going to, going to apply tank, the model, to a fishery example. So we've conceptualized a fishery stock that has a population of fish in it. Maybe it's thousands of fish, it could be millions of fish, it could be kilograms of fish, and so forth. It could be weight or number. And the fish in this process, they come in through immigration. There's a source of fish outside of our boundary of our fishery that supplies fish, and these fish are attracted. And then we have fish that leave, that e-migrate. And these fish leave due to there being too many fish in the fishery stock. So let's put this into the energy system symbol and our tank model. So again, we have our storage tank, we're gonna call Q. So this is gonna represent our fishery stock. I'll abbreviate FS. And then we have <coughs> our source of fish out here that immigrate. So that provides a flow of fish. So this is our immigration. And then we have our e-migration and the fish leave. And as they do that, you, they use energy. So we're going to symbolize our energy use again with this heat sink. So any energy that's used to swim or transport obeys the second law. <coughs> now we want to symbolize, and we're going to call this source E. This is the energy source that's providing our fish. And we're going to call this J the fish coming into our stock, J1. And the fish leaving, J2. Further, we're going to assume, again, first order kinetics for our E migration and assume that J2 equals some K, we'll call it K2, times Q, times the population of fish in our storage. And the J1 equals some K, we'll call it K1, times E. So now we can write our difference equation, dq dt is the inflows minus the outflows, so it's k1e minus k2q. Now what we would like to do is to put numbers on our model so that we can calibrate and determine what the coefficients k1 and k2 are going to be. So we've gone out and we've sampled our fishery and we understand that there are 10 metric tons of fish surrounding our fishery that's going to be able to supply. That doesn't mean that 10 metric tons is coming in to our fishery, it just means that this is the supply outside of our system. Coming into our fishery, we have five grams per square meter per day coming into our fishery, that's our inflow. We have a thousand grams per square meter inside of our fishery at any one time, or at a moment in time. And then we're gonna estimate that we have three grams per square meter per day leaving. Well, if this was not a differential equation, but just simply it was a case of summing the inflows and outflows, we can see that there's five coming in, three leaving. That means there's two more coming in than leaving. So therefore, we're gonna add two grams each day. That would be our net increase. But what we need to realize is that this three is not constant. These are values that we're using in order to determine what the K values are. So this three is going to be changing depending on how much fish we have in Q. So let's determine what this K1 will be here. So we can see that this K1 is the inflow, and we know that J1 equals K1E equals five grams per square meter per day. So we can write J1 equals K1E, or five, or we're gonna solve for K1 equals J1 divided by E. Well, we know what J1 is, we're given that, and we know what E is, 10 metric tons. So it's five grams per square meter per day 
divided by a thousand metric tons. Therefore, K1 is a half of a gram of fish per square meter per day per metric ton of fish. We can do the same thing for J2. J2 equals K2 Q. Solve for K2. K2 is J2 over Q. J2 is 3 grams per square meter per day. And Q is 1,000 grams. So we're dividing by Q, so we'll get to uh, 1 meter square has 1,000 grams. Multiply that out, and we get 0 0.003. Cancel out our units. This is grams of fish. This is grams of fish, square meter, square meter, per day. So what we end up with is just per day. We'll write that as d to the superscript negative 1. Once we have determined our co pathway coefficients, k1 and k2 in this example, it's nice to substitute them back into the differential equation to double check our units. Because as we notice, the units for the coefficients are quite odd units. And we'll talk about that more later. But for now, <coughs> We need to realize that the flows are some material per unit time. In this case, it's the mass per unit area of fishery per unit time. Same with the outflow, they have the same units, whereas Q has the units of just material or mass per area. There is no time associated with Q, but once we take the derivative of Q, <coughs> we can see that it's the change in Q per change in time, so it will have units of flow. So all of our units in this example are going to be grams per square meter per day on both sides, grams per square meter per day minus grams per square meter per day. Very important to have unit <coughs> consistency. This is often called dimensional analysis. Let's substitute in our coefficients into our equation with the units that we have to make sure that we are still getting the units that we need for flow. So dq dt equals k1 times e. So 0.5 grams of fish per square meter per day per metric ton of fish. That's all K1 times E, which was in metric tons. And then K2Q minus that. K2 is 0 0.003 per day times Q, which was 1,000 grams per square meter. So each term, meaning K1E is a term, K2Q is a term, should have the units of grams per square meter per day. Grams of fish per square meter per day, metric tons times metric tons, the metric tons cancel out. We're left with grams per square meter per day. Grams per square meter divided by days, so we have grams per square meter per day in that case. So our units cancel out, and we're satisfied with this.